Here in Sonora, Mexico, and reaching far over the border into Arizona, is a rugged wilderness known to all hunters as mountain lion country. Hounds are valuable to lion hunters only if they're interested in one single track, mountain lion. Our story concerns a young hound named Paco, who unfortunately hasn't learned this. He has a good nose for lion, except when a deer jumps up across his path. And this time, the whole pack follows Paco's false lead. When Paco hears the angry voices of the hunters, he has a strong hunch nothing good's about to happen. Paco's caper has given the almost captured lion time to escape. In this hot, dry country, a fresh scent doesn't last long. The tough trip back to camp without anything to show for the long day's work only magnifies Paco's disgrace. There's meat for the rest of the hounds, but they don't even consider Paco worth feeding. They can only talk about the lion that got away. And the more they talk, the more hatred they build up against Paco. And they don't let him forget it. Paco doesn't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But he figures he's just about wore out his welcome here, and he's not going to stay around to find out. By morning, he's hungry and thirsty, but he keeps on going toward the nearest town, where he hopes he can get a handout. Mexican border town turns out to be as unfriendly as the camp. Nobody has any time for a tired, hungry hound dog, except one old man getting a shoe shine. Paco just can't let this friendly old man walk out of his life. He wonders if the feller might like a partner. He evidently would. Paco's never ridden in such a nice car before, and the breeze feels mighty pleasant on his face. Hello, Gavino. How about your passport? All right, know your passport's all right. How about the dog here? No tengo pasaporte, No health certificate? No. No Siento vaccination? Mucho. Siento mucho que lo tenga para well, he sent him in. You'll have to take him out. Come on, sir. Come on, Pooch, I'm sorry, but you can't come in. Looks like Paco's lost the first friend he ever had, and just when he thought his troubles might be over. Now, there ought to be a way a hound dog could get over there without being seen. Paco doesn't know it, but he's about to become a wetback.
His first contact on the other side is one of his own kind, a friendly fellow who wags an invitation to come aboard. Paco doesn't know where he's going, but at least he ain't walking. Looks like it's just what this fella needs, another dog. This man's name is Marvin Glenn. And like many a rancher in this area, he's a lion hunter too. It's kind of hard to surprise a man like Marvin, but you can perplex him. Being a dog man, Marvin goes over Paco with a knowing eye. He looks at his feet to see how far he's traveled, then to kind of figure about his age and health, and to see if there are any marks of ownership. Nope, nothing there. As soon as they can, Marvin and his son Warner take Paco out to see how he'll fit into the pack. They aren't out long when the dogs come across two fresh scents, lion and deer. The well-trained pack stays with the lion scent, but Paco, up to his old habit, goes off on the deer track. He just can't resist the sport chasing these bouncing critters. And you know something? He ain't never caught one yet. There are lots of deer tracks here, and he follows one of them higher into the timber country. This deer can't run from him. And her killer goes to find a safer spot till he can return to his prey. This time of year, a dead doe almost always means there's an orphan somewhere nearby. He's too young to know fear. And this is a new experience for Paco, to have something walk up and stand looking at you instead of running away. The more he inspects this little guy, the better he likes him. Nature gives to many animals an instinct to adopt the young of other species under certain conditions. And the lonesome fawn feels protected by this thing that is friendly, warm, and moving. So it just seems natural to follow him off. On the way home, Warner hurries to pick up Paco's trail before it gets too late. It isn't till almost nightfall that he finds him, keeping watch over the fawn. It doesn't surprise Warner too much because he's seen the lion's kill on the way here. Warner will take the fawn home to feed and care for him till he can make it on his own. By now, Paco feels like the fawn really belongs to him. The next morning, the friendship's still going strong. The Glens wonder if maybe this thing just might cure the hound's deer chasing. With his bell on so they can tell where he is, He's given the run of the home pasture and becomes one of the family. Four months later, little knobs of antlers are beginning to sprout, and he's lost the spots that had been Mother Nature's camouflage in his babyhood. And in the primitive wilderness that surrounds the ranch, his natural enemy still prowls, always a threat to deer and to cattle. This is why the state offers a good bounty for lions, and the Cattlemen's Association offer a bonus to boot.
The next time Marvin goes out looking over some cattle near the ranch, he decides to take Paco with him just to get a little better acquainted. Paco doesn't want to leave. He and his fawn are like an old hen with one chick. The fawn wants to follow Paco. Nobody had thought to lock the gate this time. Paco picks up the scent of trouble. It's a yearling steer killed about a week ago, it looks like. But his nose tells him a lion had returned to feed on it just a while before they got there. So it isn't hard for Marvin to pick up fresh one-way tracks into a steep walled canyon. boxed in at the end of a crevice with only one way out, which he's blocking. Paco doesn't stay on the lion's trail the way he should. Marvin can't complain too much this time. He still has hopes for this hound that he's come to like a lot. When Paco sees no fawn, he instinctively uses his nose to give him any clues. And after he's sure the fawn's nowhere around close, the kennel isn't high enough to hold him. This country's a lot bigger than the fawn figured on, and he can't find Paco anywhere, but a pair of watchful green eyes see him. he's never felt before in his life. There's only one thing on his mind now. He's got to get that lion. <laughs> to a hunter, the baying of a hound in the heat of a chase is a sound all its own. They don't take time to wonder what hound or why.
these hunters are noted for their skill in taking lion alive. And this young male will probably become a zoo specimen instead of a pelt. Marvin has a strong hunch that from now on he's got himself a lion dog for keeps. But even in the midst of Paco's new importance, he doesn't forget old friendships. As he waits for his partner to catch up, he sees a young buck in a clearing. Habit sends him ahead a few steps, but somehow he finds the old sporting challenge is gone. When you can have the real sport of bringing a lion to bay, it seems like puppy stuff to chase deer, especially when one of the critters is a fellow's best friend. Back once more in their pen, Paco feels a deep down contentment. Being a dog, he doesn't understand why, but you and I know why. It's a feeling of belonging for the first time in his life and of knowing that those around him think he's a pretty good hound dog.